Today we're going to be fabricating a temporary single unit crown on number 31. The first step in fabricating a temporary crown is you want to take a preliminary impression of the tooth before the doctor preps it so that you're getting some of the anatomy of the tooth when you're making your temporary. For teaching purposes, this number 31 already has a temporary on it, but we're going to act like it's an unprepped tooth. So there's two different types of impressions you can take. You can either take an impression with alginate or you can take an impression with VPS putty. And there's many different brands of putty that you can use to take your impression. So first, we're gonna show you both ways and then whichever office you're at, obviously you'll do whatever they recommend. First, we're gonna take an impression with the alginate. So you don't need a full mouth impression. As you can see, we're using a quadrant tray that will just cover two to three teeth. That way you're not wasting extra alginate or VPS putty. So you wanna make sure you have everything out. You have your alginate, your mixing bowl, your mixing spatula, we know we're obviously only doing a prep on one tooth, so we're only gonna use one scoop of alginate, and the ratio is one scoop to the first line of the powder. If you were doing two scoops, then it would go to the second line, three scoops, the third line, but because we're only doing a single unit prep, we are only gonna use one scoop. To scoop the sides, flip it, and then you're scooping it up into your spatula to add it to your impression. And you don't need to overfill it because obviously the tooth is not prepped yet, so it'll squeeze all out. You load it in your tray, you put it over the teeth that you're going to be taking the impression of, which we're doing number 31. And then you wait for it to set up. Two hours later. See how it's getting to that rubbery state now? That's how you can tell it's set up and you can take it out. So when you're taking it out, you're typically you're going to rock it from side to side and loosen it up. And then take it out. And that is a perfect impression. So now keep in mind, you see how there's three and a half teeth in that impression. We're only doing number 31. So we're only going to put our temporary material in number 31. But that's a great impression. Now we're gonna be showing you taking a preliminary impression before the doctor preps the tooth with VPS putty. VPS putty consists of two separate pastes. There's a base and a catalyst, and you always have to get equal parts when there's a base and a catalyst to mix them together so they're a homogenous mix. Now again, because we're doing a single tooth, we don't need to fill our entire scoop because that could cover an entire quadrant. So we're doing half of a scoop in each. No, God, please, no! And sometimes that happens. So she, again, she wants to make sure she has equal parts. The base and the catalyst. And when you have a base and a catalyst, when you mix them together, the chemical reaction happens and then they can harden. So she starts just incorporating in the base and the catalyst. So you want to, again, it's a homogenous mix where it's smooth and totally incorporated. As you can see now, it's looking kind of marbly with blue and white. We want it to be a solid color. That's how you know it's equally mixed. If you don't equally mix it, then it may not set up correctly. 
So you just keep flipping it around back and forth, rolling it out. Again, if you see that marbly look, it's not ready. And you can either put this in an impression tray or you can just set it on the tooth and kind of make your own tray. So again, we're taking number 31. So we're gonna make sure we cover it on all angles, just like if you were using an impression tray. The facial buckle or the lingual, you're gonna push down on the occlusal so that now you're getting a really good impression of the tooth before the doctor has prepped it. And these preliminary impressions are to help you when you make your temporary so that there's a little bit of anatomy in there for you. So now you just wait for it to set up. And again, it'll, every manufacturer is different. It's typically two and a half minutes of working time. But again, because we're using a typodont, we don't have that patient's heat in their mouth or their saliva to help it set up. So you just keep feeling it. And again, as like she did, if, you're, if you can see a dent in it with your finger, then we know it's not set up yet. So we're gonna go ahead and wait for that. Now, if the patient came in and let's say the tooth was already broken, and you could not take a good preliminary impression, there's a couple different things you can do. You can um, do a blob technique where you don't take an impression, you just make your temporary and you have to kind of add the anatomy yourself. Or you can take the impression and with an instrument kind of scoop out the area where it is broken. But you will definitely have to do some making of the anatomy when the tooth is broken. All right, it's set. So she's putting her nail in it, it's bouncing back. So she's gonna wiggle it off. And again, you can see a perfect impression before the doctor preps. Again, this is covering three teeth, but we're only gonna use the middle one because that's number 31, which the doctor's prepping. So once we have these impressions, whether it's the VPS, or the alginate, that's our preliminary impressions before the doctor preps the tooth to be prepared to make our temporary when he's done with his prep. Now we are ready to make our temporary crown. The doctor has done the preparation on the tooth, so the tooth is prepped. We've packed our retraction cord. The doctor has taken the final impression to send off to the lab. And now the assistant comes in to make the temporary crown. So our tray set up to make a temporary crown is our articulating paper holder, which we won't use till the end, and that's to check their bite. We, our next instrument is either, goes by many different names, a Woodson, a beaver tail, plastic instrument. We have our tissue scissors. We have our hemostats. We have our mixing spatula, explorer, and we have a little bit of Vaseline because we wanna Vaseline the tooth just slightly, even the teeth on the front and the back so that the temporary material doesn't stick to all the other teeth in the certain areas. So you take your cotton tip applicator, Put a light amount of Vaseline on the prep tooth and the tooth in front and behind. And there's different materials you can use to make your temporary. We either have the syringable type of material that is auto mixing by using a tip that auto mixes. There's always a base and a catalyst and it has a tip and you can see the orange spirally is where it auto mixes for you. Or we have jet acrylic and liquid, which is a powder and a liquid. Um, obviously for speed, the syringable material is much faster, but some offices still may use the liquid and the powder because it's much stronger. So, I mean, if you're doing a very large bridge or the person bites hard, it may be appropriate to use jet acrylic and liquid. 
Teresa's going to start today with using, making the temporary with the jet powder and liquid acrylic. Now you only need a very small amount because again, we're only using a single crown. She is going to use her alginate preliminary impression she took, but she could also use the VPS. Again, it's just going to be assistant preference. So she has a mixing bowl that she makes sure is already cleaned out. She's gonna add a little bit of the powder to the bowl. And again, she only needs very little because she's doing just a single unit. And then she takes her liquid and she's gonna add little drops of liquid to the powder. And then she's going to use her spatula to mix and incorporate it all in. And there's, again, different stages of this and different consistencies. You want it to be, again, just like kind of when you're baking a cake, you don't want any powder showing in, in the bottom of the bowl. You want to make sure it's all thoroughly mixed in together. Again, you saw that she added a little extra powder if you put a little bit too much liquid. And sometimes it's like a salt and pepper kind of situation where you have to add a little bit of this and add a little bit of that until you get it the consistency you want. You don't want it too runny, otherwise when you put it in your impression, it's going to run out. So you want it to where it's thick enough that it will stay in the area. Now mind you, we're only doing number 31, so after it's mixed, and you wanna make sure again, there's no powder in the bowl, it's mixed thoroughly. You're going to add it into number 31. That's what the doctor prepped for. Now again, you don't wanna overload it with too much temporary material because it is gonna squeeze out and go into the other teeth. But you have to remember, you're taking it of number 31. So you just wanna fill in that tooth. And once it's filled in, you're gonna put the impression back on and you wanna make sure your impression is the right way. If you have it on backwards, obviously, it's not gonna seat correctly. So you put it back on and you seat it on with the material in there. You wanna recap your liquid because that evaporates and we don't want it to spill. While we're waiting for it to set up, you wanna clean up your instruments, clean out your bowl with some gauze so that it doesn't harden inside the bowl. You're gonna to wanna to clean off your spatula with a little alcohol gauze. So while you're waiting for that to set up, you're kind of cleaning up your area. Because once this hardens, it's very hard to get off. So while it's still in a soft state, you wanna clean out your bowls, make sure the lids are on everything. Again, same with the alginate. When it's in the patient's mouth, the temperature of the patient's mouth and saliva will help set it up faster. But on a Typodont, it takes a little bit longer, but typically it's about two and a half, three minutes. And again, you usually have a little ball left over that you're gonna hold of the acrylic so that you'll know when it's hardened. Obviously, it's still very soft. And see, when you see the little strings, you know it's not set up yet. So you're kind of holding on to that to know when it's set. And again, in the meantime, she's cleaned up her area. So she's put everything away. She's cleaned up all her instruments. She's cleaned up her work area. She's got everything closed up. And now we're just waiting for it to set up. It's getting a little more set. As you can see, it's not doesn't have those stringy things when you pull them apart anymore. With the trick with using the temporary material is you don't want it to fully set because then it will lock onto the tooth and you may have to get the dentist to come cut off your temporary if it locks on. So there's a fine line between not taking it off too early and waiting too long to take it off. It will heat up and as the assistant, you can feel when it's heating up, then it's setting. So she's gonna try it on and off a couple times. If she takes it off, 
You wiggle from side to side. You have to be careful not to distort it. If it stays on the tooth, you can try the impression back on. At this point, she can clean off the excess acrylic that has gone on the other tooth. Because remember, we're just doing number 31. So we wanna clean off the acrylic from the other teeth. And then that makes for less trimming that we have to do once it is fully set to make sure our contacts are and our margins are good. So she's using her Explorer to lift it up and then put it back down. Now she could put the, if you feel like you did distort it too much, she could put the impression, the alginate impression back on. to make sure she's got that anatomy again. But this is where you're gonna use your Explorer to kind of feel for when it's set and it's ready to be trimmed. You're gonna use a motor and an acrylic burr to do the trimming and there's many different kinds. We have a portable one. There's many different types of acrylic burrs. There's Christmas trees, they call them different things. There's round, but that's a cone-shaped burr. And again, she's trying on, taking off the impression, seeing if it's set enough yet, and it still seems a little soft. So that's where she's trying to use the tip of the Explorer to see if it's set yet. And again, when it's in the patient's mouth, that accelerates the setting time. She's gonna have the patient bite down to make sure the bite is good. You wanna make sure you're getting it so it gets the margins and the margins are around the gum line because when you make your temporary, it has to go and reach all the way to the gum line. It can't have short margins where some of the root is exposed. That would be very sensitive to the patient. So she's just cleaning up the other areas of the tooth while she's waiting. There's obviously some excess, either some excess alginate from the impression or some excess impression material or temporary material has gotten in the areas. So while she's waiting for it to set up, she's cleaning it up a little and she keeps trying it off and on. It's still a little soft, so we have to wait until it's hard enough. Because if we try and trim it when it's too soft, it won't work. So think of it as the, it's kind of like the acrylic that when you do um, nails, on your nails for women. You need it hard enough so when you're trimming that, you're actually gonna be trimming some acrylic away. If it's too soft, it would just turn to mush. All right, now it's been long enough that our temporary is hardened and has completely set up. So try to squeeze it. It's not gonna, it's hard as a rock. So now what she's gonna do is outline the margins of, margins that's the margins on the, the prep. So we need to mark those margins on the temporary. So when you're trimming away with your acrylic burr, you don't trim those margins away. So you take a pencil and you lightly outline the margins on the temporary and you'll be able to feel them because they stand out a little bit. So now she's outlined her margins to be sure that when she's trimming with the acrylic burr, she doesn't trim them away. So she's gonna get whatever motor she's using. This just happens to be a portable slow speed motor. Some will already be on the dental unit. 
and she's gonna turn it on, not at a very fast level, but enough where she's gonna get enough force to trim that away. So you're always gonna hold it upside down between your fingers, holding it tightly because it will slip away. And with your other hand that's using the palm grasp to hold the slow speed, you're gonna use a fulcrum. And then you're gonna slowly start trimming away, being sure not to trim away those margins. Again, you're making sure you have a tight hold on it with your fulcrum because it could slip out of your hands. Those motors are very forceful. So you're doing a little at a time, getting as close to the margins as you can because we want that to fit back on the patient's tooth and be comfortable. They typically wear this temporary for about two weeks while the lab makes the permanent crown, whether it be gold, porcelain fused to metal, all porcelain. So they're wearing this temporary for about 10 days to 14 days, depending on the lab. And so it must fit and it must fit the patient comfortably. They have to have a temporary in that spot because otherwise the gum tissue could grow back over. And you're gonna try it back on After you trim a little, and you can see she's pretty much trimmed the bulk away. And you keep going back and forth, trimming a little, trying it on, because you don't want to trim so much and you try it back on and you've trimmed too much off. So make sure every little bit that you trim, you try it back on and then you can see where you need to trim more off of. You don't want it too bulky. You want it to look as natural as possible, but keep in mind, these are not natural teeth. It is a temporary. Some patients might question that it looks a little funny. Well, that's because it's a temporary. It's not the permanent one. When the permanent one comes back from the lab, it will look like a permanent tooth, just like their original tooth did. And you can pick a shade of temporary material to use just like the assistant would use the shade guide to pick out the shade of the permanent one that is being made at the lab. So now she's working on the anatomy, so she's on the occlusion, trying to make sure, again, the patient bite cannot be off. When they bite together, this cannot be too high because that will be very uncomfortable for the patient. And that's where we'll use our articulating paper so we're trying it back on the tooth now again, because we've trimmed a little more off of it. So you can see her margins are good. It goes to the gum line. Her margins are good. Now she's gonna work on just a little bit of anatomy and the contact areas. You have to be very careful not to trim away the contact areas because you want Again, the teeth will shift even in two weeks. So there needs to be a contact, just like a regular tooth with where it touches the tooth adjacent to it. So again, it's just constant trimming and trying on, trimming and trying on. Again, you see how she's going around the contact area. She's not directly going in the interproximal. That is the contact area. That's where it meets the tooth next to it. So you don't want to trim that, but you want to trim any excess around that. Again, she's trying it back on. Now she's going to take her articulating paper and she's going to have the patient tap, 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 because on the articulating paper, it will show if it's high anywhere. So you can see it's hitting the tooth in front of it but it's not hitting the tooth behind it and there's excess on the tooth that we're doing the temporary on. So she's gonna trim a little bit of more of that and that's the occlusion that she's trimming. Again, you want the, pa the patient to bite down and it feel natural. Although the articulating paper is gonna show us where to trim, 
When we think we have it, we're going to have the patient bite down and they're going to tell us if it feels high anywhere. They're the best judge of that. She's going around again. She's working on the anatomy a little bit. You don't want it to be like a box. You want it to be rounded to look like number 31 or number 30 with the anatomy. We don't want it to look like a box. So now she's kind of working on a little bit of anatomy, putting the grooves in the top. So she's on the occlusion, working on a little bit of anatomy, putting the groove lines in the anatomy on the occlusion. She's rounding it off a little on the facial and the lingual. Again, she's going to try it back on. Again, using your articulating paper, have the patient tap, tap, tap. We're gonna look. Now we can see that the articulating paper is hitting all three teeth. You see it's hitting number 32, number 31, and number 30. It just looks to be a little bit high in the center there. So when you use the articulating paper, you want it to be hitting all three teeth evenly. Where it was hitting the tooth that was mesial to it, it was hitting the tooth that was distal to it, but you can see where there was excess blue on the occlusion where it was hitting a little high in one spot. So it's just a back and forth kind of situation where you try it on, you have the patient bite with the articulating paper, tap, tap. Again, we can see it's hitting all three teeth. Maybe just a little bit more on the occlusion. And again, at this point, when we see it's hitting all three teeth with the articulating paper, we would ask the patient, okay, where do you feel it's high? And they can literally pinpoint and tell us. Tap with our articulating paper. And now we're more even. It's hitting on number 32, it's hitting on number 31, it's hitting on number 30, it's hitting on 29 and 28. So it is hitting on all the T's. So we can see we're very close. She's just gonna take it down a little more. And again, at this point, we would ask the patient, does it feel comfortable to you? Do you, can you tell where it's hitting more towards the front, more towards the back? Again, keep in mind, this is just a temporary for them to wear for two weeks. So it's not gonna be perfect just like a, their permanent tooth would, but we need it to be comfortable for them and we need it to fit them properly so the tooth does not shift in the two weeks that they're wearing the temporary. So we'd have the patient bite down. They would tell us if it doesn't feel right. And there we go. So the, it's hitting on all the teeth, all the way up, even to the canine. So at this point, we would take the temporary and we would polish it. See how it's not hitting in the occlusion anymore? We would polish it to buff it, and you, there's many ways you can do that. You can take it to the, the lab with the lathe and use a rag wheel with some pumice, or you can even, there's attachments you can do with a rag wheel to buff it up so, again, it's not rough. We don't want it to be rough for the patient, and we want to buff it out so the marks are not all gone. We're going to take a cotton roll or some gauze and clean the articulating paper off the teeth, and then once we buff it out a little bit, it's gonna be ready to be cemented on. Now it gets cemented on with temporary cement. We don't wanna put it on with permanent cement because then the doctor won't be able to get it off in two weeks when it's time to put the permanent one on. So there's many different brands of temporary cement. We're gonna use Temp Bond. 
So we're gonna get cleaned up and get ready to cement this temp on with temp on. 